Hey, home bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And if you're baking bread ahead of time, planning for Christmas, you might be interested to hear about the part baked principle. Roll that thing tune. Hello then, welcome back to the Bake With Jack YouTube channel, where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single day. Thursday. It's two weeks till Christmas and that means two things. If you haven't placed an order for your Bake With Jack merchandise as Christmas presents this year, last order dates are fast approaching so get your order in ASAP. And secondly, if you haven't thought about what you're going to eat over the Christmas season, it's time to sit down with a pencil and get planning. Plan your preparation for the perfect Christmas meal. I love that part of Christmas but hey, I'm a little bit like that. So picture this scenario, you want that fresh bread taste on Christmas Day or Boxing Day, but you don't want to get up at four o'clock in the morning to make that happen? It's completely possible. To make bread taste fresh like it's just come out of the oven, but you actually baked it a few days ago or a couple of weeks ago, you've got to pop it back into the oven to reheat it and bring that freshness back. 10 to 15 minutes in the oven is usually enough to bring back the freshness, but it's usually just enough to make the crust too crispy or to dry out your bread if it was fully baked in the first place. Does that make sense? So then the answer is if you're deliberately baking bread ahead of time so that you can refresh it and make it taste fresh, you have to part bake it. Then when you put it back in the oven, you're finishing off that final part of the bake. Not unlike uh, most of the artisanal bread that you see freshly baked every morning in the supermarket. <laughs> After that final 10-15 minutes in the oven, it will be just perfect, as if you just baked it. If you are part baking ahead in time for Christmas or any other time of year for that matter, there are a few things to bear in mind. As always, we are talking principles here. There is no one size fits all process that can guide you through step by step, but the principle applies to all. Part baking always works best with smaller breads, and that's because you can bake it through to the middle in a shorter amount of time without it taking on too much colour. I wouldn't intentionally, for example, bake a two pound loaf part baked because it'll have to bake a long time for it to be ready in the middle, and in that time, the outside will get properly crusty. When you bring it back to life in the oven, the outside will probably get a little bit too crusty and the heat probably wouldn't have penetrated to the inside all the way in that short amount of time. For smaller breads like rolls or the Christmas wreath bread I made a couple of weeks ago, you can pretty much guarantee that by 10 minutes before the end of baking time, it's gonna be baked through to the middle. The rest of the baking time is there just to get a nice golden crust on the outside of it. So you're pretty safe that the inside is baked ready to store it or freeze it ready for the big day. If you part bake your rolls or Christmas wreath bread ahead of time by like a few days, you'll probably get away with storing it at room temperature. Either pop it in a Ziploc bag, wrap it up inside a cling film or put it in some sort of airtight box or tin. That way the moisture will be kept inside the bread over the next few days and then in the final bake it won't dry out too much. If you're baking any further ahead of time it's a nice idea to freeze things. Let it cool down completely and then pop it in a Ziploc bag or wrap it up in cling film and pop it in the freezer. It will live quite happily in your freezer for ages. The stock answer is probably one month but you might get away with longer as long as you wrap it nicely to avoid freezer burn. Freezing bread works, but what you've got to remember and what nobody ever talks about is the damage factor. I'm talking about a little chip here and there or a crack where you've just tossed in a box of fish fingers into the freezer on top of your bread without even thinking. Be careful if you're freezing your part baked bread and to bring it back to life, you've got a few options. What I tend to do and what I prefer is to take it out of the freezer and leave it on the side to let it defrost overnight before finishing off the bake the following day when I'm ready. There are other ways and tactics you can employ to make that happen that I put to the test in another recent video that I will link up here somewhere and there's another interesting learning point within that video about the detaching crust. As a home baker you have your own instincts and they'll be different to your neighbours and possibly different to mine depending on your level of experience and practice but you won't gain your own instincts without trying things out for yourself. If I gave you straight up instructions for every single bread down to the minute and the temperature of your oven, that's a ton of work for me to try out and uh, you'll learn nothing. So let the takeaway of this video be the following. Stop baking your bread 
just before it starts to colour up too much. 10 minutes before the end of the baking time for a small bread is a nice guideline. When you bring back the bread in the oven, a good temperature to use is the same temperature you would have used in the first place to bake your bread. The temperature your oven would have been had you continued to bake it all the way till the end. 10 to 15 minutes in the oven to bring it back is a nice guideline, but keep your eye on it. Stop baking when it's a nice golden colour, or it's as crispy and crusty as your taste. When you put your part-baked bread into the oven, it will start baking and get soft and steamy, and then it will go through that stage. The heat will go to the middle, and the outside will start to dry out and get crispy and crusty, exactly like it would have been had you baked it all through to the end in the first place. So that's it for this week. Make Christmas easy for yourself. Plan your menu. Man, I love that part. Prep yourself ahead of time so you can enjoy the day without worrying. Have yourself a glass of mulled wine and keep the cooking process streamlined without compromising on creating something exceptional for your friends and your family. Don't forget, if you'd like to make the rosemary and cranberry Christmas wreath bread that looks like this, there is the recipe in full on the Bake With Jack blog, as well as a video to show you exactly how to shape it up and make it look beautiful. I'll link them both up here somewhere. Thank you so much for joining me here every single Thursday. I hope this video helps you make fresh bread without the stress ready for Christmas. And I'll look forward to seeing you next week back here for another weekly bread making tip. See ya. And there you have it. Thanks so much for stopping by for your weekly bread making tip. And if you are ordering Bake With Jack gift bundles like these for your loved ones this year, please double check the postage guidelines before you place your order to make sure you get it in time for Christmas. Everything you need to know can be found at bakewithjack.co.uk forward slash shop. See ya.